This episode of the Brilliance Plus Passion podcast is brought to you by Groundhog Day is an event, not a business strategy. Are you ready to finally solve those pesky issues that keep holding back your business success and never seem to go away? Embrace the power of the spring formula that unearths the issues and opportunities burrowed beneath the surface and grow your business so you thrive from your intersection of your brilliance and your passion. Claim your copy today at www.thegroundhogbook.com. Welcome to the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast. Join us as we celebrate entrepreneurs, business creators, and brilliant minds who reveal what they are doing to make the world a better place by being part of it. Be sure to visit our website at www.brilliancepluspassion.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now sit back, lean in, tune in, get your notepad and two pens ready, and let's get started. My name is Adam Homey. I am your host, and I am honored by your wise decision to tune in and invest in yourself today. Right here, right now today, we are speaking with Joe Nicasio, who is known as the creator of the happiness, or excuse me, the business happiness blueprint and the employee escape plan. He's the author of Resurrecting America's Entrepreneurial Spirit. To tell you a little bit about Joe, he was frustrated with the way business is taught. So he has created a completely new and unique way to mentor people to create a happiness-centered business from scratch. Business happiness is about doing something you love for yourself and others, sharing that love through your service and effective marketing and receiving love in the form of cash and appreciation from grateful clients. Joe's going to share a lot more about that when we speak with him over the next few minutes. Right now, Joe Nicasio, welcome aboard. Well, thanks for having me, Adam. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And I guess I'm number one. I'm your premier uh, uh, guest on your new show. So this is exciting. <laughs> Absolutely. So I already kind of teased this in my brief intro of you. So our first question is, how does the work you do make the world a better place for your clients, customers, and the world at large? I'm glad you asked that, Adam. Um, you know, look, I, I help people. You know, I think a lot of people are in a career by default and not a career by design. Right. And I help people actually build a business where you do what you love. You share the love. You, you take your passion, your gifts. Everybody has gifts. Everybody yes. has gifts. You know, everybody's got talents. Everybody's got some kind of magic. You know, I'm a believer in from God. Okay. Children are born as geniuses, then conditioned into mediocrity. The problem is um, most of us, uh, our gifts are not organized in a way right. that we bring the maximum impact. So I help people discover their magic and then actually organize it and monetize it and bring their gifts to the world in the form of entrepreneurship. So uh, I right. help them show up more powerfully with more impact, making a bigger differences. And when you can give a lot, and more powerfully, you can receive a lot. And there's a huge ripple effect that on that in the world, including the fact that people wake up every day. They don't just like go to a job, but they wake up. Yeah. I love what I do. Yes. You know, I'm good at what I'm doing. I'm using my superpowers. <laughs> I'm changing lives. And wow, they even pay me money for this. And I'm so grateful I get to live my passion. And so that that's fantastic individually. And it ripples into the world. Exactly. That's awesome. So let's just drill in very quickly. What is it specifically that you do? Um, what I do is, is I, you know, uh, I mentor people to build a better business from scratch. Yep. Uh, I, I transform employees into entrepreneurs, people that they never really were taught to be an entrepreneur. I teach them to be one and I actually help them. Mm -hmm. Number one, employee escape plan is about figuring out what's the right business for you. And then once we figure that out, that's a baby course now. I've changed the whole structure. Yep. And, and then once we figure out what's the right business for you, then we build that business with the business happiness blueprint. And so basically I do coaching and mentoring to help people. I hold people's hands. I connect the dots yep. and we build the business and we get your darn cash register ringing so you can do what you love and get paid for it. Outstanding. That's great. So in your experience, what are three of the most common questions 
that people in general have when they ask about what you do, like the FAQs. Yeah, like uh, what kind of business should I even get in in the first place mm-hmm. is one that comes up a lot. Um, Understandably. Uh, how quick can I make money? <laughs> yeah. And um, and when can I quit my job? Like yeah. a lot of people, are, they, they want out and they want out now. I've been there. I've been there. Yeah. I uh, did the side hustle transitioning to entrepreneurship myself. So I appreciate you sharing that. Now tell me three questions you wish prospective clients and customers would ask when they're considering working with you. First of all, thank you, Adam. I love this question. Mm-hmm. Um, it really makes me think. The first thing is, is um, how do I build a business that doesn't fail? Like, how okay. can I build my business? I hear about all these businesses fail. How can I build one that actually yep. works? And number one two, is, yep. um, 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 how can I have more fun making money? I wish people asked that. I think too many people want to make the money. And number three is how can I impact more lives? I think that really, especially number two, um, how can I have fun making money? That is, I mean, we hear hear all the cliches about, well, you know, uh, you know, make the money. And then there's the whole debate about whether or not money can buy happiness. It's my belief that I would rather cry behind the wheel of a Corvette than sitting on a bicycle. But that's just me. (laughs) So, uh, but yeah, I I love that you bring that up because I think that's very good. So that's good to know. Now, let's shift gears for a minute. Yeah. And uh, let me ask a few things that will help our listeners get to know Joe Nicasio a little bit better as a person. First of all, tell me something about you, some sort of fun fact that people who know you would be surprised to discover about you. I'll give you two. Number one is I'm almost a black belt in karate. I need to get get back in shape and take the test. And also, uh, I used to play the trombone for a long time, and I was no good at it. I had trouble getting out to seventh position. So um, (laughs) so those are two things. Yeah, yeah. What do you hope that people say about you when you're not around to hear it? Um, I, I wish that people said, number one, uh, he's the real deal. Um, he's a, he's an amazing problem solver and, uh, you can trust his advice. Pretty solid stuff. So basically you're looking to project an aura of integrity and reliability. Well, not just project it. I, I hopefully am living it and, yeah. <laughs> and I want to, it's really nice when people actually, you know, recognize it, understand it, appreciate it, that I'm not just trying to sell them another product. I'm actually like, somebody they can turn to as a trusted advisor and a a strategic thinking partner to really help them solve their real problems and and get shit done. Well, yours is a name that I've been hearing for about 15 years now, and I've only heard good things about it. So I think you're doing a pretty good job with that. Now, moving on, what famous person, no, actually, no, I will get to that in a minute. First of all, if you could go back in time and change one thing you've done, what would it be and why? Um. If I could change one thing and, and go back in time and teach my former self, I would say um, be kinder to yourself. You know, when 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 I had I had some pretty massive failure and you know like twenty something years ago, yeah. and it was humiliating. It was painful, and and I was I, my self talk to myself was so mean and cruel. And uh, one of the things I've learned is that depression is really anger turned inwards, and so. You know, be that kind, loving parent to yourself that you never had. Be that perfect, loving. Don't don't talk mean to yourself. The world's mean. Don't do that to yourself because uh, it's a form of self talk. Don't do that. I would teach my former self that. Yeah, I think that's a lesson a lot of us can discover. Uh, I shudder to think uh, some of the conversations I had with myself back in the day. And all that does is it keeps you in the loop. It's like in that same loop. It's like you keep hauling yourself before the court of history and finding yourself guilty over and over and over again. For what? You've already done the penance just by being there. Yeah. You know, every master was once a disaster, but, uh, you know, it's, it's up to us to take care of, you know, we have trauma in our life, but we also need to be responsible for our own healing. Exactly. Exactly. So now let's move on. Uh, what famous person alive or dead, they can be alive. They can be dead. Would you like to meet, and what question or questions would you have for them? Um, this is a, you know, this is a fun question. I could go a lot of directions with it. But uh, Thomas Edison was very inventive and creative. And yeah. I would just like to be around him and get to know him and see his, you know, get to know his way of thinking of how, how to be more inventive and creative like Thomas Edison. 
Yeah, I think part of what, I mean, with my familiarity with the Edison story, there's a lot of stick to there, which is a word that Grandma Homie used all the time with her own children to encourage them to be consistent with what they do. Uh, this is a guy who could, uh, and he never viewed it as failure. He just discovered one more way that it didn't work. Eventually, he was going to get there. Well, and it wasn't just the light bulb. I mean, he invented so many things, the phonograph and, you know, the first yeah. recording of music was Edison, you know, and right. telegraph and the telephone. You know, he was involved in all of these things. And and uh, he was he, he was I think he had more U.S. patents than any individual. It's yeah, uh, uh, quite a quite an idea factory in one human being. If you want to if you want to think of genealogical charts, what you and I are doing right now on this podcast Several of the great great grandparents of what we're doing right now were Thomas Edison's children. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, the, yeah, yes. exciting stuff. I mean, I could have gone. I could go. I could have gone to Elon Musk. I, you know, one of the questions I ask when I meet people is, "What big things are you up to?" And a lot of people are like, "Not much." But I would love to meet Elon Musk and say, "What big things are you up to?" That might be like yeah. the most interesting conversation of my life. Oh, that, that, that'd be another one. Yeah, absolutely. So what motivates and inspires you to keep going when you're having a tough time or facing a challenge? You know, I would say the most important thing is like knowing the vision of what I'm doing, knowing my purpose that, you know, the work that I'm doing isn't just to make money. It's a calling. Right. I love helping people. And so, you know, um, the knowing that no matter how much, you know, how good things are going, you know, uh, uh, number one is gratitude. Uh, uh, I'm grateful for what I've got, even if it's only 37 cents in my change jar, I'm grateful yep. for that. And I'm also grateful that more is on the way. So it's maybe, you know, it's, it's not like I'm stuck in this place. It's just a blip in time and, and things are very dynamic and fluid, but knowing my purpose is to really impact and improve people's lives and help them grow businesses that work and, and, and prosper. Um, knowing that it's the changing of the lives, continue changing lives, continue focusing on the fact that I'm doing good work. And, you know, one of the things is when you're doing great things, there's a truth that there's always opposition in all great things that you're doing. So, yep. so that, you know, the adversary wants to stop you from doing great things and you just need uh -huh. to realize I'm doing great things and I'm not going to let anything take me off course. There are so many quotes around this. Uh, there's the one from Albert Einstein about how great minds, uh, encounter violent opposition from mediocrities, if I'm saying that correctly. There's also the one about how a dog doesn't bark at a parked car. <laughs> yeah. Dogs bark at what they don't understand. Yes, yes, yes. So finally, and I know you have a special gift for our listeners, and we'll get to that in a minute. But before we do that, in general, right now, if somebody were to finish listening to this interview and go take an action right now that's going to move them forward, in the areas that you can support them. What one action would you want our listeners to take today as they finish listening to us? Uh, you know what? I'm, I, I would like you, if you're listening to this now, I would like you to number one is dream about what is your, you know, it, what do you want in terms of your career and how you wake up every day to, to give and receive in this world? Dream. What does your dream business look like? I want you to actually take some time and dream about what, you know, your business looks like and feels like on a daily basis. And then number two is I want you to journal about it. You know, what does it look like? What does it feel like? I mean, you know, reconnect with your sense of possibility, like anything is possible. So when you dream about it, don't, don't limit it or restrict it. Anything is possible. Dream. If you could create a dream business where you loved what you're doing every day, journal about it, dream about it, journal about it. Mm -hmm. And then ask yourself, uh, what steps, what's the first step that I need to take to make this thing start to happen? So basically, we're creating tangibility around the dream by journaling. It's a tactic I've been using for years. I found when I actually do it, stuff tends to happen. Yeah, whenever you create, in this case, we're creating your dream business, there's always yes. two creations. There's the creation in the mind first, mm -hmm. and then there's the creation of, you know, first we need to create the blueprint, and yep. then we then we get out the hammers and nails and we start creating it. So step one in creating your dream business is to to imagine it and visualize it mm -hmm. and then write it down, you know, and then 
start looking at what actions do I need to take to manifest that. And of course, if you need help with that, that's what I do. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Joe, for joining us today. Now, before you go, I know you have a little something for us. You told me about it in the green room. So yes. for all of our listeners, I encourage you to go to businessincubatorcommunity.com. That's businessincubatorcommunity.com. That is a group that Joe has set up for entrepreneurs and pre-entrepreneurs where you can gain support in building a better business that will be a lot more fun. So I'm going to check it out myself. That's businessincubatorcommunity.com. It's a Facebook group. So go apply to join or request to join or whatever the action is. And looks like he has a pretty good crowd in there already. I'm, I just joined myself, and I'm really looking forward to hanging out there, seeing what's going on. So again... That's businessincubatorcommunity.com. And with that, Joe Nicasio, thank you again. It's been an honor, and believe me, in education. Thank you for tuning into the Brilliance Plus Passion podcast, where we celebrate entrepreneurs, business creators, and brilliant minds who are making a difference for their community, market, and audience. Remember to visit our website at www.brilliancepluspassion.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast. Oh,